Okay, today's session is going to be on programming the Intermotive GUI, graphical user interface, onto the laptop so that we can ultimately program our gateway and iLIS products in the field. What we have in front of us is a full kit. Obviously the laptop, we have our CD, our disk, our instructions, we've got a power supply right here, We've got the module that we will update. We've got a communication cable which plugs into the module. And then we have an adapter for use with a different product called ILUS. All right, the first thing we're going to need to do is load on the GUI program onto a laptop or a PC if you're going to be doing this in the office. Uh, it's convenient to have it on a laptop in case you uh, need to go out to a bus. So uh, traditional loading, pop it in and uh, wait till the uh, prompts come up and then we will uh, go from there. Okay, now that the, uh, the CD has opened up, we've got a uh, couple of files on the uh, on the drive that we need to pull over to a file or to our desktop. I actually put them on my desktop just to make it simple. Uh, we've got a file here called CDM uh, which is a driver file with a red dot. Uh, I have actually pulled it onto my web onto my desktop right here and then I've got uh, two other files here. One is the programming utility instructions. You can click on that, open it up, print it out, and use that for, uh, for yourself. And then there's also a programming utility zip file. What we need to do is open that and pull those two files that are in, in there over to our desktop. So I'm going to go down. Um, I've already pulled the files over to my desktop, but I'm going to open up the zip drive so you can see the files. We have Intermotive Programming uh, uh, Programmer, and we also have the libserialport.dll file. Both of these files need to be pulled over. Here is where I pulled them. Down in here I have Intermotive Programmer, and my DLL file is here. You simply just need to grab them and drag and drop over to your desktop. And then once you've got that done, you can close this out, and then we're ready to uh, uh, go to the next step. Okay, the next step that we need to do is we need to go to our programmer and open up open up our Intermotive Programmer. And you will see this is just a small utility. It's got a couple of things we do here. Um, and then what we want to do is plug in our gateway module uh, into the program, into a, the laptop so that we can start the programming process. Our cable, we have a phone jack on one side. We will plug that in and then we'll also take the COM cable and plug that into our laptop. So Windows will search and this is uh, used, uh, Windows XP is what we use. Uh, not sure if this will be compatible with any of the other Windows 7 or Anyway, a utility uh, is used at Windows XP. So once we've plugged it in, uh, what we do now is we try to find out where we, what, what it's called, COM1, COM2. We need to know what COM port it is so we can choose that. Okay, you'll notice that in this utility box we have three areas. One is our file type, which is going to tell us are we going to be doing applications for firmware or are we actually going to do configurations? Uh, it automatically comes up to application, which is what we're going to do today. We have COM port. Right now it says none. We need to choose a COM port. Uh, and I'll show you how to figure out which one to choose in a moment. And then we have a third area, which is uh, where we either load or we get files. So to check which uh, COM port we are, we're going to go down to the Start menu left mouse click. We're going to go up to My Computer. We're going to do a right mouse click. And then we're going to go to Properties. 
left mouse click and then we're going to go up to the tab for hardware and then we're going to go to device manager once we pull open device manager we'll go down to the place where it's called ports we'll open that and we're looking for the USB serial port that is what this device is called when you see USB serial port right next to it tells you the COM port that it's on we are on COM1 so we'll get out of these files We'll close these we will go over to our utility our programming utility and now we'll choose COM1 once we've chosen COM1 we're ready now to take a look at what file is already residing on the gateway gateway tells us right here which file it has on it um, on this particular one it doesn't so in fact that's why we're going to go look we're going to see what files on here we're looking for firmware so what we'll do is we'll go over here once we have this plugged in gateway is plugged into the COM port uh, and the, the uh, phone jack and also our computer and what we're next going to do is we're going to get the file with a left mouse click we will see waiting come on the screen it's waiting to get a file now what we have to do here is we have to plug in power we have to power up the module you do this after you get your waiting uh, symbol so we'll go get a power cord we'll take gateway and we'll plug in the power and this is an adapter it comes part of the power supply with your kit and we'll plug that in as soon as we power it up we get something that comes up on the screen that tells us bootloader application hardware etc what this tells us is this is a gateway 605 is what's on the screen and the firmware application is 1.22 well we're going to actually just load on another firmware onto this and I believe we'll load 1.22 on us again uh, just as a an example so once we've done that we can close that by saying no and now what we want to do is we want to get a file and we're, what we're doing is we've this may be a file that's been emailed to you or sent to you somehow on a disk uh, what I do is I put that file on my desktop so that when I go to open a file to pull this file in then I can easily find it okay in this example here I've got an email the email has got a file on it which is gateway 605 1p222 which means 1.22 was done on 1013 what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that file and I'm going to drag it with my left mouse click over to my desktop and drop it there now I have this file on my desktop I can pull that in uh, to my programmer we'll close this file out now I'm going to go to open file I'm going to look at my desktop for the folder that I want, the file that I want, which is going to be the 1.22, which is right here. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to say open. And that will put that right here, waiting to be loaded. Now, once I'm ready for that, I will unplug my power to gateway again. The next thing you want to do is load that file onto this module so we're going to click load it will give us a waiting symbol then we're going to plug power into our gateway once we plug power into the gateway it should automatically start loading so I plug plug power in I'll get some lights I'll get the status indicators as this is loading I will also get a loading bar that will start coming up onto the screen. It's just a status indicator. And this may take about one to two minutes. Okay, once the programming is complete, my status indicators go out. My status indicator up here says done, and we're ready to take the power off of this module. Simply unplug power 
and this module is complete. Now if you had another module that you needed to program, you'd simply grab that module, unplug the phone jack, plug the new module back in, you would then go to load again, it would say waiting on the screen, you would plug your power back in and it would start running automatically. That's the extent of the programming for the module. Uh, the next session we'll do is on uh, the configuration, changing the actual I.O. port configuration within Gateway.